Hi folks. I uh, was watching a uh, video by Robert Casey uh, recently who presented it at the Genetic Genealogy Ireland conference in October of this year and he inspired me to try generating some Y-DNA signatures for my Gleason Lineage 2, one of the groups in uh, the Gleason DNA project. Now Robert's uh, video is available on the Genetic Genealogy Ireland YouTube channel and um, it was roughly around about slide uh, 20 minutes in uh, he talks about uh, discovering your Y-DNA signatures for a particular genetic cluster within your surname study and he makes the um, bold assumption that the most powerful relatedness indicator is sharing common mutations within your signature and then he goes on to give a few examples of this uh, he also uh, points out that um, the mutational difference between the modal of your terminal Y SNP and the modal of your surname cluster will be the signature for that particular surname cluster uh, he also says that finding close genetic matches is great, but matches with shared STR mutations are much better matches and uh, close genetic matches, similar surnames and shared mutations produce the most reliable uh, matches uh, of all. So these Y-DNA signatures can be used with genetic distance to give you a much more accurate assessment of whether or not that particular match is a close match or not. Uh, a true a true match or not and he gives some very good uh, examples of how you can see uh, these lines these bars among the uh, STR results and that's something that I also see uh, in my Gleason project because we are also on the World Family Network website and we click on that and click on the results page uh, we do see that there are in fact these wonderful color patterns on the uh, website and the the particular world family network website that we're using looks at the haplogroup uh, modal haplogroup for or one b you'll see it there uh, and this is just uh, highlighting then the color the differences between the modal haplotype for or one b and for each of these subgroups and you can see that there are some very very distinct uh, genetic signatures there between say lineage 3 which is down here lineage 2 which is this one here and lineage 1 at the very top again a very different one from what you see so uh, what I did was I simply copied uh, the data from the World Families uh, Network website by simply clicking and highlighting it and then copied it all into a spreadsheet it's a fairly easy thing to do so just copy that and then paste it into a spreadsheet and this is what I get in the spreadsheet yeah you'll see it there uh, the marker is up here at the top and then the modal haplogroup for R1B across the top there but uh, I wanted the modal haplogroup for the more upstream SNP which in in my case with Gleason lineage 2 is the Z255 modal and in order to get the Z255 modal, I looked at the L21 project. Uh, that was one source for the, the modal. And this was it, the L21. And if I do a command F Z255 and search for it, there it is down there. So I simply just uh, copy this modal here. Here's the modal haplotype. Just copy that by uh, whoops, clicking and dragging. And let's it over there so all of those blue ones there are highlighted copy that and then paste it into the web sheet uh, web, web spreadsheet down here and I also got it from Dale uh, Matheson's uh, website which is this one here and there's the web address uh, just so that you have it for future reference and um, Dale's particular one for Z255 is this one here L159.2 also the Z255 project so again clicked on that and it brings us down here L159.2 and then it's simply a question of copying that particular row there and then that gets copied into the spreadsheet here so I have um, two versions of the Z255 modal to check to see if they were uh, the same or different in any way I simply um, subtracted one from the other so this square here is equal to the one above 
minus the one below and that's the answer there is zero so there's zero difference between 13 minus 13 is zero and then I just simply drag that along the whole length to actually get uh, to copy the whole thing uh, along the length of the STOR values and I just noticed that there was one difference um, Diane has a value of 18 for SNP for STOR 570 and the L21 project has a value of 17 but other than that there's good concordance there between these two and then what I what I did was I subtracted the lineage 2 model my Gleason lineage 2 model which is this one across here in bold from um, the L21 was just good enough uh, it doesn't really matter they're both very similar and I found there's a minus one there there's a one there there's a one there so it highlighted those STOR values where there was a difference between the lineage 2 modal for the Gleason group and the modal for the L21 um, so for the Z255 group based on the L21 project and I highlighted those particular rows in yellow and that uh, gave me a very good indication that this was possibly the signature for the uh, Gleason Lineage 2 group now I went only with the ones where there was almost all of the members of the group and here you see them here on the left hand side all the members of the group um, had that particular value um, and there was only two cases where they didn't uh, so for this particular one 439 the value was either uh, 13 or 14 and for this particular one here which is 458 the value was 16 459a uh, was 8 throughout 448 was uh, 19 throughout and 464b was 16 R17. So that was a draft genetic signature from my Gleason lineage 2 group. Looking out at the other markers further along, um, 710 was supposed to be 37 largely, and 532 was largely 14, possibly 15. So uh, these were two more distant markers that could also help in distinguishing between. Uh, a, a true Gleason match, a Gleason lineage 2 match, and maybe a match due to convergence or some uh, other uh, reason. So the next step then was to see whether this was true, whether there was di good discriminator discriminatory power for this particular uh, genetic signature. And so to help with that, what I did, and I'm going to just move this over here for now, is I went to Alex Williamson's um, big tree and let me bring that up here and there is Alex's tree there and I went to the Z255 part of the tree and uh, with with Alex's tree you can overlay STOR data so what I did was I took it in turns to overlay each of these uh, uh, so each of these STOR values that were supposedly uh, the genetic signature of Gleason lineage 2 to see just how discriminating they were. So for 439, which is the first one, and I'm going to make that slightly bigger so you can see it just that little bit uh, better. So for 439, and let's move that there like that, we're looking for a value of 13 or 14. So let's go to 439 and scroll down. There's 439 there and let's overlay it and we see that when this comes up the values for 439 that are common in this particular part of the tree of mankind are 11 12 13 and 14 uh, we're particularly interested in 13 which is in blue uh, there's none there these are all 12s because it's green and we're also looking for 14 and purple and the Gleasons I know are at the far end of this tree and there they are there there's the Gleason part of the tree and uh, if I make this a little bit smaller it becomes a lot clearer that um, for this particular STR marker it is pretty discriminatory for this for the Gleason part of the tree you know there's a few on adjacent branches which also have the value of uh, 14 in this instance but most of the other people in this part of the Z255 tree are in actual fact uh, uh, green or pink which as you'll see below 
uh, is either 12 or 11. So very, very different values. So 439 is, is uh, the value of four, 13 or 14 for, for marker 439 is discriminatory. The next marker is 458, and we're looking here for a value of 16 to distinguish the Gleasons from everybody else. And if we go down and look for 458, and there it is there, and then click on Overlay ST or Data. For this particular marker, 458, the most common values occurring in this part of the tree are 15, 16, 17, and 18 and we're looking for a value of 16, so that will be the green. And if we go along to the Gleason end of the tree, and there we go, there's the Gleasons and a couple of their neighbors, um, but, but certainly this value of 16 for STOR uh, 458 is very discriminatory, uh, and it, it distinguishes the Gleasons and a few of their close neighbors from the rest of the Z255 tree of mankind. The next marker along is the 459A, uh, marker and that should be 8 so if we uh, look for 459A and there it is there and we overlay the STOR data the typical values that you get for 459 in the Z255 portion of the tree are 8, eight to 10 is pink, 9 to 10 is uh, green and 9 to 9 is um, purple and we're looking for 459A being 8, so there's 459A being 8 there, so that we're looking for the pink um, colour, and it doesn't appear anywhere in the tree until you get to the Gleasons, and the Gleasons are almost exclusively, there's a Tracy over there, but the Gleasons are almost exclusively, um, uh, in the, the 8 is, is almost exclusive to the Gleasons. So again, that's another uh, marker that gives very good discriminatory um, value. The next marker is 448, and we're looking for a mar uh, the value of 19. So 448, let's go here, and we look for 448, and there it is there. So if we overlay that marker, we'll find that values for 448 in this part of the tree, uh, we're looking for 19 but most people will have a value of 18 or 19, and 19 is in blue. Uh, there's uh, 18 in pink all there. If we go to the Gleason side of the tree, and again, it is very discriminator. There's a, quite a distinct cutoff there between the Gleasons and their close neighbors and the rest of the Z255 uh, group, indicating that marker 448's value of 19 is a good discriminatory factor for uh, the Gleasons. 464B being 16 or 17 is the next one. So if we overlay 464 on the big tree, and there it is there, and we are looking for a value of 16 or 17 for marker 464B. And these ones are done a little bit differently. So uh, 464B will be the second one, and we're looking for a value of 16 or 17. Um, uh, well, there's uh, 15, 16, 17, 17, 15, 17, 17, 17. So we're looking at either this kind of pinkish one or this pinky orangey one. And if we look across the tree, uh, there's a couple of pinkish ones. But when you get to the Gleasons, it really does look... Um, there's pink and there's pink orange. So it is relatively um, discriminatory for the Gleasons and some of their close neighbors. Um, we also had a few other ones and if we take a little look at those and go along here we'll find that 710 is the next marker and the one after that is 532. So let's look at 710 first of all and the marker that we're looking for for 710 is 37. So let's go back and look for 710. And this might be a little bit difficult to find. And um, there it is there. So we will click on that. And the value for 710 we're looking for is 37. And in this particular part of the tree, Z255, the value of 37 for 710 
is in purple, but we also get the values 33, 34, 35, 36, and 38. So we're looking for purple ones, and already I'm seeing purple ones here. So this is not going to be a terribly good discriminatory marker. There's another purple one there, Adams. There's another one there. And yeah, the Gleasons are, some of them are that value, but other than uh, of them are outside of that value. So it's not a great discriminatory value, 710 being 37. What about uh, the next one, which was 532? And the value for 532 we're looking for is 14 or 15. So if we go back to the, um, the markers and we're looking for 532 and um, it will be somewhere here. There's 532. So if we click on that and then click on overlay STOR data. And we're looking for a value of 14 or 15 for 532. And 14 or 15 are going to appear in either cyan, so blue or violet, blue or purple. And if we look along, there's a couple of blues there. Uh, there's quite a few blues there. Um, and um, it could very well be, and there we see the Gleason's again. So it's not, not hugely discriminatory. It's not as good as certainly the earlier ones we saw. Um, so on the on that basis, then having gone through the um, the Alex's uh, confirmatory exercise, here's a summary of what we've actually done. We've compared the modal haplotypes for your particular surname cluster and its larger upstream SNP, and in this case it, for me and Leeson Lineage Two, uh, the upstream SNP was Z255. Um, and we got hold of the upstream SNP modal either via the specific haplogroup project or via Diana Gale Matheson's uh, web page on her website. The Y-DNA signature is based on the differences between the two modal haplotypes, the surname haplotype and the upstream SNP haplotype. Then we checked the discriminatory power of the Y-DNA signature against Alex Williamson's big tree STR overlay, and this uh, did confirm that the Gleason lineage 2 was best defined by the marker 439, value of 13 or 14, 458, 16, 459A being 8, 448 being 19, 464B being 16 or 17. And together with genetic distance, the Y-DNA signature can help identify true matches. And a very important application of this is it helps distinguish between what is an NPE among your list of matches and matches that are purely just due to convergence. And uh, yes, you do have a common ancestor, but it's thousands of years ago, not hundreds of years ago. Two important things to remember, not everyone will match the signature exactly. So in my particular uh, Gleason Lineage 2 group, um, most of the people were exactly matching five out of five for these five Y-DNA signature markers. Um, some of them were matching on only four out of the five of them, but they still belonged to the group. And the other important caveat is that lack of matching. So if somebody doesn't match this signature, it doesn't mean they don't belong. It just means that they're not typical of that particular signature. So all the signature does is it helps identify the majority of people that would fit into that group. But there will be outliers that will be missed. So just because somebody doesn't match the signature exactly, don't fall into the trap of thinking that they don't necess that they're immediately ruled out from that group. The probability is that they are, but uh, you just need to exercise a degree of caution and circumspection. So there we go.